Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number three in our incredible tutorial series where you are going to learn to code in Python or you are going to die trying. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big cup of black coffee because it is caffeine that fuels the engineering world. And I'm going to need you to get out your Python idle. And as you are firing up your idle, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your support and your encouragement that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and get ready to learn some cool new stuff. Okay, now what we've done in lesson number one, you learned how to install Python and you learned how to do some basic math operators, play around with variables. In lesson number two, you learned how to do list or arrays, a more complicated uh, data type, a more complicated variable type. You learned how to do that. But up until this point, we have been sort of writing our code one line at a time. So I would say something like x is equal to 7, and then I would say y is equal to 3, and then I would say z is equal to x plus y, and then I would say print z. And that's kind of convenient. Again, Python is execution ready. It will do one line of code at a time, and you can just sit and play with it like that. That's kind of actually useful for learning things because you see we can just sit and kind of dabble with it and learn things. But then really quickly, which is for us right now, you get to the point that you actually need to write programs where you stack lines of code together and then run them as a program. And that is what we are going to do today. And so you get there from your idle, you will come up and you will point at file and you will click and come down to new file. And when you do new file, you have what basically comes up and it is like a blank text editor. You see, I can just type in it. And what do you notice? You notice that you don't get that little Python prompt where Python is waiting for a command. Here we are going to write a file and then we are going to run the whole file. So it's not going to execute it one line at a time. It's going to be more like your old you know, classical writing a program. So let's go ahead and save this. So I am going to save as, and you need to somewhere create yourself a Python folder. And I've got probably something here set up already. I've got uh, inside of my top tech boy uh, folder, I've got a folder called Python. You create a folder wherever you want, and then you put your Python files there. And I'm going to call this, let's just call this, uh, uh, my first Python. Okay. And then what you see is it's going to put a .py file extension. So if I say save, okay, it creates it. I'm just going to come and make sure that that's actually there. And so I will open this up, quick access, go to Python and boom, there is my Python my first python.py. It's in there with my old videos. Probably not the best place to put it, but we will continue to put it there anyway. You can put yours wherever you want. All right, now look at this. You see, I can say uh, greet, greeting is equal to the string. Greeting is equal to the string. Hello world. Okay, and then I can say print and then I'm gonna print greeting. And then now I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to say under run. I know you guys can see my typing for the coding pretty well, but I know that the labels on the window are small. So I'll tell you very carefully, you go to run, you click on run and you come to run module and you say it must be saved. Okay, save it. And then you come back to your shell, right? It prints out to your shell. So it opens up that shell window and it prints what? Hello world. Shazam. Our first program that we've written in Python as an actual program. 
a boom. Okay, we got that done. Now, I don't want to kill this. I'm just going to minimize it so that way it'll pop up the right size in the future. Okay, so now let's learn some new stuff. So let's just say that I can say x is equal to 7, and I can say y is equal to to 2, and then I can say z is equal to x plus y. This is like what we were doing earlier, just kind of like one line at a time. And then I can say print, right? We want to print it nicely formatted, so I can say print x, and then print the string space plus space, and then comma y, and then I want to put in the string space equal space, and close that string, and then print z like that. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And then again, run and then run module must be saved. Okay. Boom. Seven plus two equal nine. We are Python program writing machines. Yes, we are Python program writing machines. Okay, so that's kind of like what we were doing before, right? It's like what we were doing before. I'm going to come back to the programming window. It's like what we were doing before, only now we're stacking the lines of code together. All right, now let's say you wanted to get input from the user. The way you get, because that's like right off the bat, whatever you're going to want to do, you got to get input from the user. And remember, you guys that are coming from Arduino, how did we get input from the user in Arduino? We had to do three things. We had to ask for it, we had to wait for it, and we had to read. And so we asked with a print statement, and then we waited with a little infinite while loop, and then we read it with a, uh, like a serial.parsen or serial.parse uh, parse float, something like that. Okay. so. Get Getting user input from uh, the Arduino was a little bit of a three-step process. It's much, much easier in Python, and this is how you do it. You just say, let's say x is equal to, and then what you do is you say input, and then you open up the input, and then you, okay, put in your prompt. What is your prompt? Please input your number and then you close the prompt and then you close the input parentheses okay like that so x is equal to please input your number so you're getting input from the keyboard you are prompting the user to please input your number and then you are putting the number that they input into x and then what i can do is i can say print and then i can say your number your number is okay and then comma x like that all right does that look good okay so let's run this and this is most annoying that it always makes me save it okay it says please input your number and i will say seven okay and then it prints hello world that is kind of crazy what did we do on this program we better come back over here x is equal to please input your number your number is x that was kind of crazy let's try running that again run module okay my number is seven and it says your number is seven i don't know what happened up there it's like i got an unexpected result but anyway it's working now so your number is seven. All right, right off the bat, something I'm going to be really, really picky on with you guys, and this annoys me with the students that I have in my classroom. What is wrong with this? You see how it said, please input your number, and then it put the seven here. You see, I didn't leave a space there so that it would look nicely. I'm not nicely formatting my request for user input. So what would be better if you said, please input your number, do something like a colon and a space. And now let's look at what a big difference that makes as far as nice looking uh, code. And that's why I always think about things that make sense, things that are organized, things that look good to the user. So I'm going to say run module now, save it, okay. And now please input your number. Okay, now look, you see how it put a space there. And now when I put in seven, it looks nice. Your number is seven much nicer, I must say. Much, much nicer, I must say. Okay, so let's come back over here and you see that that actually worked very, very 
well. And so let's try this. Let's see if we can input a string. So I will say name is equal to input to get it from the user. Please enter your name like that. Okay. Please enter your name. So that's going to go into name. And then I'm going to print. I'm going to print the string hello. And then I'll put a space and then close that. And then what? Name. And then a comma right. As I'm stacking these prints together, you got to put a comma between everything name. And then I'm going to say welcome to Python land. Welcome to Python land. All right, I love Python land. I love it a lot. Okay, so hello name, welcome to Python. So now we are going to run and the most annoying, save the program first. Okay, enter your name. I am Paul. Oh, what did I just do? Did you see guys? I did not put the space in there like I told you to. Okay, but it says, hello, Paul. Welcome to Python land. Need to do a little bit better punctuation. So I will come back to the program and I'm going to say, make it nicely formatted like that. And then I am going to say, hello, name. And then I think I really need a comma after name like that. And then welcome to Python land. Let's put a little pizzazz with an exclamation point. And now let's try this run module. OK, so it asked me for my name. I am Paul. Look at that nice formatting. Uh huh. Who's doing cool formatting? Yes, sir. OK. Hello, Paul. Ooh, that should have had a that should have had a uh, a space after that. Let's try cleaning that up a little bit. And so there should be a space right there and not a there's not a space there. Okay, so this should work. So now we're going to run it. Run module. Save it. Okay. My name is Paul. Hello, Paul. Welcome to Python land. All right. Boom. We are making code. And I guess I should let you see that exclamation point. We are writing code. So this is pretty cool. Okay. This has been kind of like a, a pretty quick lesson, a pretty easy lesson. We're just kind of taking a lot of the stuff that we learned earlier. And what we are doing is we're stacking it together and now writing programs. Time for your homework. OK, you guys really do your homework. Don't just sit and copy and paste what I'm doing. Do your homework. All right. So this is your homework in this lesson, lesson number three. And then I will show you I will do in lesson number four. I will solve it for you and talk to you about it. OK, so what your program should do is it should ask the user for its for, for his first his or her first number. So say, please enter your first number. OK, then ask the user for their second number. You know, please input your second number. OK, so you're going to read from the user their first number. You're going to read from the user their second number. And then you're going to say something like if you read it into X and then you read it into Y, you're going to say Z is equal to X plus Y. OK, you're going to read it and then you're going to very nicely format it, format it in something like your answer is X plus y equal nine. So if you enter seven is x and two in the second one, then you're going to say seven plus two equal nine. So that's your homework. Get two numbers from the user and then nicely format, nicely print out the answer, including the equations to be like seven plus two equal nine. OK, and then if you I can't imagine you would have any trouble with that. But if you do, you might go back, review the earlier lessons. But really, guys, try to make it work without watching me do it. OK, because you got to learn. You're not going to learn unless you do it on your own. OK, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I'm having making them. If you like this, make sure to give a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already, I need you to hit that subscribe button. When you subscribe, make sure you ring the bell so you will get notification when more of these exceptional tutorials come out. Again, this is Paul McWhorter from Top Tech Boy. I will talk to you guys later.